Hey guys, how's the prey running? My name's Metal Cobra, and I'm currently in college to become a veterinary technician. For those of you who don't know what that means, a veterinary technician, aka vet tech, is basically an animal nurse. However, there are a few things that we can do that a human nurse can't. But, I digress. I'm making this video to bring something back to the Warriors community. I've been reading the book since I was in fourth grade, and I've been a fan ever since. In fact, I'd even go as far to say that the errands played a part in inspiring me to go into the field of veterinary medicine. I was always so fascinated by the idea of medicine cats taking care of their sick clanmates, and I even remember making poultices out of clovers and grass when I was littler. That being said, since I started vet tech school, I've probably reread the entire series at least four times, from Into the Wild to The Last Hope, and pretty much every other Warriors book I own. Now, a couple of things that I've noticed about the medical factors in the book have become clear to me since starting school, and I decided to make this video to share some of what I learned. Now, to be fair, I'm well aware that this is a series on fantasy cats. However, I think these facts will come as interesting to some people. So, without further ado, let's get started. First, there have been a few cases in the Warrior series of cats dislocating their shoulders. In Moonrise, Cinderpelt diagnoses mouse fur with a dislocated shoulder after an encounter with the two legs. In Twilight, Rain Whisker dislocates his shoulder in his fight with the badgers. However, it's actually impossible for a dog or cat to dislocate their shoulders. Why? Turns out, the scapula, or shoulder blade, of a dog or cat attaches the forelimbs to the rest of the body only by muscle, nerves, skin, you know, the works. In other words, the forelegs are not attached by bone, which means there isn't a joint to dislocate the shoulder from. However, dislocating a tail, spine, hind limb, etc. is much more realistic. I'm guessing the errands have included the possibility of shoulder dislocation in the books to further humanize the characters. And, let's be real, it certainly does. Next, anyone who reads the Warrior series remembers times of famine and general hunger. For example, it can be very hard for a clan to find enough food and leaf bear, and sometimes that means warriors can go days or even weeks without eating. With that being said, in real life, it's very dangerous for a cat to stop eating abruptly if it's usually well-fed. In fact, cats can develop a, a disease called hepatic lipidosis, otherwise known as fatty liver disease. Basically, what happens is the liver has trouble breaking down and getting rid of excess lipids, or fats, which can result in an accumulation of fat inside the liver's cells. This is an extremely serious medical condition that can wind up being fatal if not treated quickly and aggressively by a veterinarian. It's important to note that the exact cause of this disease is unknown, but again, cats who are used to eating well and suddenly stop eating for any reason have a high chance of developing this disease. Another somewhat well-known wives' tale is that cats who get fixed become fat and lazy. This is apparent in Henry, a cat Rusty and Smudge are seen talking about in Into the Wild. Later, when Rusty joins ThunderClan and becomes Firepaw, he meets Smudge again and finds out that Smudge has also been to the Cutter, and then he becomes fat and lazy. For some reason I don't quite understand, it has become common for people to worry that their animals are going to get like this after they get spayed or neutered. However, this is a myth. Any animal, whether they're fixed or not, is likely to gain weight and seem lazy if they don't get enough exercise, just like a human. I can promise you that this is not an actual reason to hold off on spaying or neutering your pets. For more information, please consult your veterinarian. I'm sure they'll clear up any confusion. Finally, most of us already know about the fact that it's highly unrealistic for kittens to open their eyes the day after they're born. And, once they do open their eyes, all kittens have the same steely blue for their eye color for a while before developing the eye color they'll have as an adult. To be honest, this never really bothered me that much when the errands described kittens opening their eyes the day after they're born. In my opinion, this further humanizes the characters, and it makes it easier for us to grow fond of the little floofballs. Though, seriously, who doesn't like kittens? In conclusion, the Warriors books are a fantasy series about fantasy cats. Any inconsistencies with real-world veterinary knowledge shouldn't take away from the marvelous storytelling of the errands. But 
In my opinion, it certainly makes the characters seem more human and relatable. So, the next time you read the series and hear about a dislocated shoulder or a kitty pet becoming fat and lazy after visiting with the cutter, now you'll know. Thanks so much for listening to my first video, and as I continue studying, I'll probably come up with more facts to share about cats. Until next time!